If you want to be able to build this in Planet Zoo, then stick with me with my updated 2022 7 episode tutorial series. In this series we are going to cover the basic controls, landscaping, pathing, barriers, building, foliage and enrichment. And since many things have changed since 2019 when my last tutorial have been online, here's a brand new series you can build along. The park is available to download, but now let's begin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, to the next episode of our 2022 tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about pathing, our beloved pathing in Planet Zoo. Now this tutorial is going to focus on the tool, the pathing tool, and obviously on preparing our habitat over here with the given pathing that we want to have in this wonderful build. Now, a couple of things first of all. The pathing menu is to the bottom right of the screen, which is cool. And you can choose between normal path, a queue, and the staff path. We are going to start with the easiest, and that is the queue. The queue is basically the path you only need to use if you want to build a ride. Rides are going to be found under facilities and transport rides. You've got five different types, and they can have an entrance and an exit. And for the entrance, you're going to use a queue so people can queue up. But basically, you are not going to use this anytime soon in your park, I guess, because you need some normal path first. The staff path on the other side, you've got four different versions of it, will give access to certain buildings solely for the staff members. Your guests won't go onto this path unless they are protesters and going to protest for a certain animal, then they will also abuse the staff path. Now that said, you have the same controls for all of the path over here. You can change on the right hand side the angle snap, the length, the width of it and also different types how the camera works. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with the pathing. Now, let's move over to the right hand side here a little bit. Now the pathing tool always gives you this little circle with which you start. If you click from this point on, you can build into whatever direction you wanna go. If you want to have angle snap, just as I have, hit spacebar or disable it by hitting spacebar again, and it's gonna bring up the angle snap. Basically, I'm just going to show you increasing the angle is going to increase the steps it turns around if I hit spacebar. I have a free 360, look at that, woo, 360 style, very neat. If I hit spacebar again, you can see it's becoming more shoppy because it's giving me the different angles. Now, we're going to stick to the angle for the moment and we're going to place another path and place another path. And you can see this is how easy you drag out a path, but there are a couple more options to that. So you can see if I have a path and I want to connect this to another, you can see it creates a joint. Now, by hitting the Y key on my keyboard, but it might be the Z key on your keyboard, depending on which country you're in, Y or Z, depending on your hotkeys, it's gonna change the type of the joint. So if you keep this key, Y or Z, hold, it's gonna create always a 90 degree perfect angle, if it's possible, to the path. If you unleash the key, it's gonna make a nice subtle transition if you see what I mean over here. If I hold it down, it's gonna make a perfect 90 degree connection to it. So it's gonna adjust the path just like that. So it's connecting in a 90 degree angle. If you don't do that, it always connects the perfect angle. So it's making a smooth entrance to the other path. Now we are going to put another one in here and make a smooth connection to this one. And you can see this is your fourth path you've laid down. Unfortunately though, you just can't fill in this middle piece over here because that's just not how the game works. You can do certain things like that. It's just not really a plaza. If you want to build a real plaza, you can basically go down to the path menu and there is a different option. You again choose your path. You can choose the width you want to have it. I'm going to go with six meter right now. You can see if I go further and then I'm going to change to five meter, you can see the path is actually going to become a little bit less big. If I'm gonna do this again, you can see it's narrowing down to the end of it. Very nice. You can also use the plus and minus key on your keyboard. This will give you access to immediate, um, you know, um, oh, it's by, for me it's plus and uh, U in the German keyboard, but it's the key on the left hand side to the plus key, which is going to give you the smaller option and the bigger option. Uh, make sure to learn these because they are a lot more handy to do that. But now I promised you to build a little plaza. Now we chose to go for six meters, so we're gonna stay with six meters. The important bit is that you just build one more piece because this is going to 
make sure which direction your plaza is going to go. So if your plaza should have this direction mainly, make sure to set it down. Now if you've done those two, you go down here to the button Align to Grid. At this moment, your key will move to a certain path and it's going to connect to the grid that this path is offering. So if we move over here to the left hand side again, you can see this path is also going to be connected if I hover over. So I can build a plaza from there. But now, since we were here, I'm just going to click this one and now I can build a plaza. What you can see over here, it creates immediately rectangular edges. If you don't want to have that, you can disable the square edges button down here. Very simple indeed. And now you can see it's going to create a roundish edge. It's always depending on what you want to do. A little cool bit is you can even delete pieces in the middle to have like a little, I don't know, planter if you want. So this is going to create you a big plaza. From over here, you can also always connect path if you want, just like so, make it over. Now, I'm going to show you a little expert tip at this point, okay? So in case you are talking to someone in a bar, you have the bar trick here. It's, it's basically the same, even though everyone knows about the bar trick in the community. If you want to have this edge smoothed out, because that looks ugly, right? You've got this weird kind of path joined over here that you don't want. You just go in here and you're gonna put a path in like that. You can see this creates like a joint in the middle. You click once, but you don't click twice. You basically delete the piece you've just built with right clicking on that piece. And then you can see the path magically has smoothed out. This is a bug that has been in this game engine since the Planet Coaster days and hasn't been patched out because, well, basically it's becoming, becoming a feature, it became a feature. So the same can happen on the other side, just click it and you can um, repeat the process a couple of times and it's gonna always smooth out the, the path according to what you've just done. Very easy. Now, if you've done a couple of things and you dislike whatever you've done, you can just use your cursor, click on whatever path you want, hit down the delete key and then it brings up this delete basically circle and from here you can just hold hold down mouse key left and drag over the path and it's just going to delete all the paths you've just built now with changing texture it's that simple you just take the other path and just click wherever you want and it's going to change the texture well it's not really surprising is it it just works okay now we've done everything we've covered the ground okay now shall we build some stairs well stairs in planet zoo are very simple yet very tricky now simple is basically the technology behind this you just click it and if you want to go up you just hold your left mouse key down and drag this mouse up like that and then it just goes down one step this is a semi kind of semi angle you know a ramp and if you do it once more it creates a staircase Unfortunately though, you only have those two options. If I drag it higher, nothing happens. If I drag it lower, it's basically back to the ground. So this, these are the two options you have. There are a couple of ways how to trick the system. I will link a expert tutorial for pathing because it's going to definitely you know, uh, cr crush this video if I go into detail with that because there's a lot to learn about this. If you're interested, make sure to check out this other expert tutorial, but for now we're going to stick with the basics. Now, you can basically build a staircase over here, but if you want to be more precise, there is a way to do that. On the right hand side, there is a option. If you go to this little wheel, and go all the way down, there is a new little toggle, oh, it's actually not new anymore, it has been added along the way, and you can click elevated length, just click it, and now you can drag this all the way down to 0.5 meters. What happens now is, you've got the same situation going on from the beginning, but now if I hold and drag it up, you can see there is just that tiny piece existing over here, and from this point on, you can build your staircase a lot more precise. Now, there's one thing happening right now, you might see. I'm building like a roundish staircase, as you can see, because I'm dragging my mouse to the right hand side. If I drag it to the left hand side, it's going to create a little circle to the left hand side. And if I keep it straight in relation to what I built, it's gonna build the whole thing like a straight. If you don't want to have this, you have to put in a little wonderful check mark down here or basically disable the curved slopes. If I do that, you're basically always building straight. Now the same thing applies over here. You've got the semi ramp or if you want to have a full fledged um, kind of staircase, you can do it by just going once more up 
and then you've got the same control over it. Now the reason why this method is a lot better to be used is because you've got a lot more control to build your insane staircases because you just not build like a 4 by 4 meter piece, you just have so much more control. You can see unfortunately this setting is not going to be kept, you always have to go down back in here and change it whenever you've closed the menu for once. Now I'm going to delete this again and I'm going to show you exactly what you can do as well. So I just moved up four steps, right? And what I do now is I just go back and now you have this little floaty path. But what you can do, you can just trick the system by just making sure to put the path elevation you want to go to at that height, okay? So I'm just going to put this in like so. And now you can make a connection between those two and it's creating an even more subtle ramp for you just automatically because those two um, in relation to each other will always have the, the ramp created from one height to the other height by the ramp. But that just only works if you have a certain height. You can also do the same by, and this is another little simple trick, if you want to not build or not connect to this piece, you can always disconnect by holding down the control key and it's giving you a new first trigger point of your path. Always hold down control. So you can see when holding down control, there is no auto connect. I'm gonna release the key and boom, I'm just kind of magnetically connected to that one. Hold down this again and nothing happened. If you also hold down shift now, it's going to give you another option. You can see what happens now with the path. If I hold down shift, it's going to create this outline, which is basically the curb. And from this point on, you can move your mouse up and down as well. And it's going to move your piece up and down freely in the air. Now, if you release the shift key, it's going to remain on the same height and you can move it around. Um, only make sure to always press hold the control key, because if you release that one, this will happen and then you are gone from the height where you were. But if you if you hit control again, you will be back at the height where you've been previously. So that's good to know. Now, if you want to create a certain ramp, make sure to go to the elevation that you want to go to. Click it like here, for example, and put another one like so, I'd say. And now you can make use, wait, I didn't press that one down. Now I did. And now you can create a staircase between those. Pretty simple, just like that. Um, so this might be a little bit more handy if you want to build some quick staircases like that. Now, this old set, this is very handy indeed if you build them freely. If you build alongside the terrain, you're always prone to use the wonderful tool that is given here to the right hand side, the elevated length, because if you operate with the um, shortest piece, it'll always give you the best control over building very close to the terrain. I'm just gonna quickly show you. Uh, if I do this over here, for example, normally it wouldn't work, but if I have the short one over here, you can see I can even build very close to the terrain. Now, if I don't do this, and I'm just going to show you that again by disabling that, you can see I have no control whatsoever to build here. But if you go back in here, I have the control to do so. Also, I would then just turn off the angle snap and look at that, I can even, I can even build over here. Look at how cool that is. Look, this works, okay? And if I would have done this without, just showing you right now, just disabling this, you have no control whatsoever to build this over here. Okay, this time around it works, but normally it doesn't, as you can see. But you have more control with the smaller one. All right, that's it. Let's delete everything and set up our path for what we want to do in this tutorial in the next episode. So let's delete all the path again with the little trick of holding down the, this, um, the, the delete key and then you can just drag over. Now what I want to have is I want to have a little plaza here to welcome the people. I want to have like a roundish area that goes around here, like a little bit of a path that has a bit of a bigger viewing in the front and then has like a little park-ish lane that goes through a little forest or like some foliage things. And then I want to have like a raised viewing platform that is very close to this um, kind of fake mountain over here. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode and we're also going to have an access to the backstage which is on this stage or on this side I should say. Now this is where the building will later be. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to five meters over here and just going to quickly create this area which is going to be a little roundish plaza. Next time around I want to have the square edges so I'm just going to bring the square edges in and now I want to have a four meter wide path that is connecting those two. So I'm going to go to four meters and I want to have it connect from over here but first of all this is going to be a little connector piece 
to our plaza, which is that one. The plaza should be right over here in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go as close as possible to the lake, just to have it very close by. And then I'm just going to choose that, use a line to the grid, and I'm just going to make sure that this is going to be my plaza we have over here. So I want to have the plaza in a certain form, which is that one. And now what I do is I'm just going to connect the path in a nice way, so just like so. And we are also going to have the path move from this side as well, just making it somewhat nicely mirrored. And then we will have this bigger path also joining over here. And I'm just increasing the size as long as I need to, to make it nice looking. So what you can see over here, this one really doesn't look good, right? This wonderful little plaza doesn't look good at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix the edges by just doing this trick. Look at that, nice and roundish, do the same over here. And now what we need to do is these two. Unfortunately, they don't work because my path is too wide. So we are using a smaller one if that works. So both of the sides seem not to work, but there's another way of doing it by just, oops, deleting that one I wanted to say, but just moving it so long until you have it. Or you could even get rid of the water, put the water back in. Um, we're going to try this, just making a real life situation. And then we can just do that, delete the path, do that, delete the path. And now we can bring back in the water and it doesn't work because the path is too close. Now, this is a thing that I wanted to happen. Sometimes I'm happy if it doesn't work, but this time around I wanted it to happen simply because this shows you how finicky sometimes the work can be. And now it still doesn't work, right? You have to make use of the redo undo button. Unfortunately, sometimes these things don't work in the game and you have to find different solutions. Now, as I've smoothed out quite a bit, this whole thing is now one piece. And unfortunately, you can't really do anything else. Now, what I always recommend is leave it as it is. Use some barriers later on to cover this up and make that looking good. Wait, I found a way to have it in. Look at that. Ooh, nice, sweet. Maybe I find another one here. Look, I did it. That was very coincidental, but I did it. Sometimes just trial and error does the trick. And now over here, as I said, I just want to have a little curling path that just go through here. And from over here, I want to make sure that they can reach a nice platform. The platform should be a bit bigger. So I'm gonna go for four meters to five meters, raise the whole thing above water, just like that. And I think this is the height I wanna go for. And now I'm going to move it ever so slightly here to this position just like that. So it's gonna hug this area quite nicely and I'm gonna create this wonderful area. Now this is pretty nice, isn't it? Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the path goes to this point without being too aggressive. So what I'm going to do is I'm using the same trick as I did previously and now I'm just using this to move these things slightly higher and then position them a little bit off from each other. So just like so, okay? Um, so this is a good way of making sure you have a nice transition somewhere. So just making that, raising that again, so like this, and sometimes also checking on which height you are. So it looks like we are already on a pretty decent height. So maybe we just don't need that even more. Um, and so what we're going to do is obviously connect these two. Now, this one is not subtle enough for me, so I'm going to delete this piece and have a way better transition into that one. Same goes here, same goes there, same goes here. And now we're just going to curl that thing around and connect it to this wonderful platform. Now, what you can see, there is one transition that I totally don't like, but I can just delete that one and try to merge my way together. Now you can see this doesn't work because the length is not long enough, but if we increase the length, you can see there is a connection being made. Unfortunately though, it's just going to create a, a kind of staircase for me, but there is a different way of solving that. So you can see, really not nice. So what we need to do is we have another point in between that we need. So you could either try to make it that way and just delete as long as it works, or you're just going to have another point in between that is a better height. So I'm going to do this and put another one here, delete that one, delete the other one, and just kind of try my luck in making this a little bit nicer. And there you go, boom, done. With that technique, you can easily create some nice looking ramps that don't really have a crazy incline. So it's looking very smooth, very tidy, very neat, and we're going to take care of that in the future. One thing you may notice is there is nothing below. Now, I always have one thing disactivated, uh, and this is the supports, but you can use the supports by just clicking this in, 
and then your path has some supports again if you fancy having some i do want to have some over here but since i do cover this up all the time i don't need them but just showing you now one more thing we need to connect this area as well i want to have a nice transition in here and i want to set up the staff path as well now there is a lovely little trick to make the staff path a very nice way because there is one thing that is always annoying you want to have your staff path in a certain location just like that for example and then this piece is just so ugly I mean, unfortunately, we only have that texture. Don't get me wrong, this texture down here is brilliant. The logo in it, well, isn't. Um, I wish I just had that texture, but we don't. So we need to find ways in order to shorten that piece as much as we can. But luckily, there are ways. Remember, there was this option to use the elevated length. I always recommend using this. Choose any of those paths that is the least annoying to you. Check where you want to start it and then just build one up and one down and straighten out again. Then use the normal path and build whatever you want with this. Just like so, you know, build wherever you want. This is going to be where the backstage area is. And now you can just pretty simply go in and delete that. And in this moment where you delete this, you can change it or you just leave it as it is um, because sometimes it's easier to leave it. Um, and you can just make one out of it. For example, if you delete that, it's unfortunately it selects both. But if you have only one, you can now cover this up nicely as if this is just like a little thing and you won't barely notice people running over it. So just put two stones or one whatever to the left hand side on right hand side and you don't notice that. But that's it guys. This was our pathing tutorial. I hope it was very helpful for you. In case it was, consider subscribing to the channel because again, that's the easiest way to support me in a free way. Make me happy, help me reach this 100k at some point and also make me just a happy camel, you know? That's what you do. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Talk to you in the next one. Have a good time. Stay safe and goodbye.